good day, my highly esteemed viewers. You are welcome back to class. First of all, I must appreciate you. I want to appreciate you, uh, those of you that have gone thus far with me, for putting my channel in your mind and patronizing it. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Please, if you are not be sharing it, you can always do me well by sharing it to your friends, your colleagues, your classmates, and God will continue to bless you. Amen. So today we have a question I want to tackle. It's a first question we came across. We are going through some of past questions in chemistry. Question says, consider the equilibrium reaction presented by the equation. See the equation. Delta H is plus, meaning it's endothermic. If it's minus, it's exothermic. Remember, exothermic means it gives out heat to the environment or surrounding, while endothermic absorbs heat. Explain briefly the effect of the following changes on the equilibrium composition. Increase the concentration of B. Decrease in pressure of the system. Addition of catalyst. Then question two, a compound contains this of hydrogen, this of carbon, and 55.04% of chlorine. Determine the empirical formula of the compound. So let's tackle it one after the other. Solution. The first one, let's write the equation. This is question one. A2 plus 3B2 to give you 2AB3. So this is the question before us. The question now says, briefly explain the effect of the following changes on the equilibrium composition. Increase the concentration of B. You can look at B. Remember, increase the concentration leads to more crowding. Therefore, collision will increase. Once there is crowding, there is collision. Once there is collision, more reaction takes place leading to an increase in the product. So as more of B is added, the concentration now increases, and therefore crowding increases, and they start colliding with themselves, leading to faster rate of reaction. Therefore, it increases the forward reaction. Equilibrium will move to the right. Whichever side that it favors is the side that equilibrium moves to. So they said, effect of the following changes on the equilibrium composition. So the effect is that more products are formed. Equilibrium moves to the right, shift to the right. That's for the first one. Favoring the product formation. That's product AB3. The second one, decrease in pressure of the system. Remember, all the systems are in gaseous form. They are gaseous. For pressure to affect system in equilibrium, one or more the reactants and products must be gaseous. If they are not the gaseous form, say they are solid, the equilibrium have no effect. So like this now, if you look at it, to know how equilibrium affects it, we say decrease in pressure of the system. You look at it, maybe I said there are two conditions. One, one or more of the reactants and products must be gaseous form. Two, number of most of gaseous reactants on the left-hand side must not be equal to the number of most of gaseous products on the right-hand side. If they are equal, equilibrium, uh, pressure will have no effect. So let's look at this. All of them are equations from this one is one mole plus three moles, making four moles. This one is two moles. So four moles giving two moles. Pressure we are we favor the side that have the increase in pressure we favor the side that have the lesser mole. Why decrease in pressure we favor the side that have the higher mole? And the question says decrease in pressure. Therefore, if you decide to have the higher move, equilibrium will move to the left, favor the reactant formation, formation of this and this. So more reactant to be formed. Equilibrium shifts to the left. I've done this. Then for the last one, addition of catalyst. If you have, remember it's, in, it's an equilibrium system. A catalyst doesn't usually have effect on the equilibrium. The only effect it has is, is Hastings the time equilibrium will be attained. The condition of the, or the condition is not affected. It just speeds up the time equilibrium will be attained. So that instead of equilibrium to be attained in a, in a say it's supposed to be attained in um, three hours, with the addition of a catalyst, it can be attained in one hour. The condition is still the same thing. Let's say, for example, I have a system like this energy profile. Let's say this. Um, this is an endothermic reaction. Eh? 
I have from here to here, which is the activation energy. So if I add a catalyst, instead of this reaction to move to this place, you see that it will go like this. You see it. It will not go to this place. It will not create its own activated complex. So from here to here, will be the energy of that, uh, or the catalyzed. So this one will be catalyzed. This one will be uncatalyzed. So equilibrium, uh, addition of the catalyst to the system in equilibrium, only shortens the time equilibrium is attained. So that is that for the first theory. We have solved this one too. So let's go to the one of the empirical formula, the one that involves calculation. Calculate a compound contains 7.75% hydrogen, 37.21% carbon, and 55.04% chlorine. Determine the empirical formula of the compound. We just write it exactly as they put it. You have number two, this is now number two. You have hydrogen, you have carbon, you have chlorine. Chlorine, okay. They said the value of hydrogen is 7.75. 7.75% Chlorine is 37.21 37.21 That's carbon, sorry to say Then Chlorine, 55.04 55.04 All of them are in percentage Let me just put it in percent Percent, there's no other thing Say calculate the empirical formula First of all, there are three basic uh, steps you follow First of all, divide each of them by the atomic mass and they gave us atomic mass as this. Hydrogen, say divide by atomic mass. This one is 7.75 over 1, 37.21 over 12, 55.04 over 35.5. Good. So you now have a value. Remember, you must follow this sequentially. Don't compress everything. You say you are divided, you don't put this one over 1, over 12. No, arrange it properly. So that in your work, you have to score the maximum mass. All the mass available, you have all of them. So if you divide this, it remains the same thing. 7.75. Let's divide the other one. 37.21. 37.21. Divide by 12. 3.10. 3.10 55.04 divide by 35.5 give you 1.55 1.55 so divide by the smallest The smallest say is 1.55, 7.55 over 1.55. You now put a ratio because you are having a common denominator. 3.10 over 1.55. Ratio 1.55 over 1.55. This one will give you 1. So you have 7.55. 7.55 over 1.55. Four point eight seven. Four point eight seven. Ratio three point one zero. Three point one zero divided by one point five five. Give you two. This one will be two. Remember this one is already one. So let's divide the first one again. Seven point five five. Sorry? Seven point seven five. Thank God we never done time. I think that's what we have in the question. 7.75. 7.75 divided by 1.55 give you 5. So this one gives you 5. So that's already giving us whole numbers. Therefore, the empirical formula is H5C2CL1. So we all start to rewrite it again to make it proper because it's an organic compound. C2H5. CL. This is, your, this is the actual compound. So that is how you carry out calculations involving empirical formula. Remember, there are some calculations in which um, they, they will tell you chloride is perfect, not give you the value. In some situations, you add these two together, subtract from 100, because everything is a percentage. The value remaining will be for chloride. 
But if, happily, for in this calculation, they gave us everything. So we follow these three steps. First step, divide each of them by the uh, atomic mass. Second step, divide by the smallest to get the more ratio. Third step, we write out the answers. Thank you very much for watching my video. Please, kindly subscribe. God bless you.